Hi everybody. This is the first lecture in the cardiovascular system and the name of the lecture is the diuretics. I'm Dr. Bahar, lecturer in the College of Pharmacy, Mustansriya University. Diuretic drugs. Diuretics can be classified to about five groups or families. The first one is the thiazide diuretics. And this involves chlorothiazide, chlorothalidone, hydrochlorothiazide, and other diuretics. The second group is the loop diuretics, like pomitanide, thicrinic acid, frosamides, and other. The third family or group is the potassium sparing diuretics, like amyloride, epilirinone, spirinolactone, and others. Next group involves the carbonic anhydrase inhibitors and and include estazolamide, dorzolamide, and others. The last group is the osmotic diuretics, and this group involves about just two uh, drugs, which involve manitol and uric. Another classification of diuretics that used in, for example, renal disorders, include drugs that modify the salt excretion, and this subdivided into the proximal convolute tubule like carbonic anhydrase inhibitors, thick ascending loop diuretics like chlorosamide, the distal convolute tubule like thiazide family, and the collecting convolute tubule which involves potassium sparing diuretics. The other subgroup is the drugs that modify water excretion and this involves osmotic diuretics which can be put within either a drug that modifies salt excretion and within the or the, the family of drugs that modify water excretion. So the drug that modify water excretion involve antidiuretic hormone antagonist like dismopressine and others. This scheme represents the site of action of diuretics. We can see that estazolamide, which is carbonic anhydrase inhibitor and inhibitory absorption of bicarb within the proximal convolute tubule. They are weak diuretic or have weak diuretic properties. Next uh, group of diuretics involve those that act within on the ascending loop of henol, like vomitanide, frosamide, dorsamide and others. These loop diuretics inhibit uh, the co-transportation of sodium, potassium, chloride in the ascending loop of phenyl, result, resulting in the retention of sodium, chloride and water in the tubule. These drugs are the most important known diuretics. This is the site of action of the ascending loop of phenyl. Another group we have thiazide and this group act within distal convolute tubule inhibitory absorption of sodium and chloride in this site and result in retention of water in the tubule. They are the most commonly used diuretics. And the last group we have the potassium sparing diuretics involve uh, two subgroup those that act as aldosterone antagonists like spironolactone which inhibit aldosterone mediated reabsorption sodium and secretion of potassium also the uh, second uh, subgroup within this uh, potassium sparing diuretics we have the uh, sodium channel blockers like amyloride trimetrine they block sodium channel and these agents can prevent the loss of potassium. So it is, they are called potassium sparing diuretics and occur with thiazide. And this uh, loss of potassium occur with uh, thiazide, with the use of thiazide or loop uh, diuretics. So this uh, figure represents the glomeruli and uh, renal tubule, the nephron within the kidney, and the red color represents the molecules that can be secreted to the lumen of the renal tubule, the transportation within organic acid and base secretory system, 
they secrete a variety of organic acids involved diuretic agents from the bloodstream to the lumen of the proximal tubule the blue color rose represents the su substance or electrolytes that can be reabsorbed from the uh, lumen of the renal uh, tubule what about the indication of diuretics they are mainly indicated for hypertension and oedema this uh, picture or image represents a typical form of uh, peripheral oedema or pitting oedema you can see and we have to know the causes of oedema this can be classified in this uh, figure we can see the red color represent the arter uh, arterioles and the grays, one, gray one represent the venule. This is the capillary and we can see we have about uh, a three or four power that control or regulate the equilibrium of the uh, blood volume uh, in this uh, zone or area. So the filtration is uh, the net result of filtration is the summation of free absorption plus the lymph node. This is the process of filtration and this is the process of reabsorption. <coughs> and we can see the function of lymphatic cells as a drainage uh, of the uh, filtrated uh, solute or substance go through the uh, lymph uh, vessels so we have uh, an important uh, power that control the pressure we have the osmotic pressure we have the hydrostatic pressure any disturbance in these uh, powers or a process may interfere with the pressure and ending with uh, oil. So the causes of edema is increased permeability, increased hydrostatic pressure, increased hydro-oncotic pressure, and another causes of related to the lymphatic vessels like lymphatic obstruction. This uh, table uh, summarizes the causes of edema, as we said, like increased capillary permeability, for example, in those with arthritis. Uh, the effect is, uh, is inflammatory oedema, increased venous capillary pressure, like in those with heart failure, increased oncotic tissue pressure, like the failure of lymph drainage, as those with uh, lymph oedema, decreased oncotic capillary pressure in those suffering from hypoalbuminemia, nephrotic syndrome, heart failure, and uh, others. So the effect here is the hypoproteinemic uh, anemia. So we will start with the families or groups of thiazide. And the beginning, <coughs> we were talking about the thiazide diuretics and their side function. You can see the effect of thiazide diuretics on the concentration of electrolytes within <coughs> the urine. So the thiazide uh, group can decrease the urinary excretion of potassium. So can be indicated to, to decrease the precipitation of uh, calcium salt, calcium oxalate uh, within the renal uh, urinary tract, sorry. Also, they increase the urinary excretion of sodium, potassium, so cause hypokalemia, and have a moderate effect on the volume uh, of urine so they are not uh, potent uh, diuretics the adverse effects of benzide group uh, present hypokalemia hyperuricemia hypotension hyponatremia and hypercalcemia uh, what about the uh, dose of uh, this group of diuretics we can see in the green uh, curve or line the hydrochlorothiazide 
which is a good example of the azide uh, group as we increase the dose as we increase the secretion of sodium till reach at uh, site when we increase dose we can't get an increase in the diuretic effect and we will reach to the plateau so the thesite can be uh, called as low ceiling uh, drugs vice versa or on the opposite a site we have the loop diuretics like frusamide which is represented by this curve or a red line uh, where thesite or frusamide or loop diuretics belong to high ceiling diuretics so as we increase the dose as we get more diuretic effect so they are dose dependent or concentration dependent uh, drugs the second group is the loop diuretics and as a mechanism of action on the electrolyte concentration within your urine we can see compared to the thiazide they cause an increased urinary secretion of calcium also an increased secretion of sodium and potassium but has a more potent diuretic effect so uh, cause more volume of urine or water urine to be secreted uh, within the urine the adverse reactions or side effects of uh, loop diuretics involve uh, autotoxicity hyperuricemia hypotension hypokalemia and hypomagnesemia the next group of diuretics is the potassium sparing diuretics and as we said this group subdivided into aldosterone antagonists like spironolactone and uh, sodium channel blockers like trimetrine and amyloride their effect on the urinary electrolyte concentration as we see uh, they decrease the urine excretion of potassium so called potassium sparing diuretics while increase excretion of sodium and have a moderate effect on the volume of urine compared to the most potent diuretics which are loop diuretics the next group of diuretic is the carbonic anhydrase inhibitors and this uh, family have a good example which is estazolamide and dorsalamide which indicated as for treatment of uh, glaucoma by interfering with intraocular pressure mainly we can see from this scheme that estazolamide can interfere with the or inhibit the enzyme which is carbonic anhydrase which which is a core factor of or enzyme that convert the h2co3 to the h2o uh, and co2 so this indicated mainly for uh, patients with a glaucoma and also those with uh, what we call the mountain sickness for those patients suffering from uh, pulmonary oedema and this disease next we can see from this slide the effect of uh, stozolamide and carbonic anhydrase inhibitors as we see that they increase the excretion of potassium sodium and uh, bicarb and so inter uh, causing the metabolic uh, acidosis and also have a moderate effect on the volume of urine <coughs> the osmotic diuretics is a weak diuretics and they cannot be uh, reabsorbed and have two examples mainly the mannitol and urea 
and indicated for patients with uh, CVA, cerebrovascular accidents, and those with acute renal failure by cause expansion of the uh, plasma. So they may cause dehydration as osmotic diuretics, but their effect is weak and cannot be indicated for treatment of uh, cardiovascular disease like hypertension and uh, heart failure. <clears throat> this scheme represents the summary of the effect of diuretics on the electrolyte urinary uh, concentration, thiazide, uh, the loop diuretics, and other uh, group or family of diuretics. From uh, this chapter, as we're finishing this chapter, we can answer about uh, these questions. We have to answer these questions as we complete this uh, chapter. So we can complete this chapter and we should able to answer the following. List five major types of diuretics and relate them to their site of action. Describe two drugs that reduce potassium loss during sodium diuresis. <clears throat> Describe a therapy that reduces calcium excretion in patients who have recurrent urinary stone. Describe a treatment for severe acute hypercalcemia in patients with advanced carcinoma. Describe a method for reducing urine volume in nephrogenic diabetic insipidus and list the major applications and the toxicities of astazolamide, thiazide, loop diuretic, and potassium sparing diuretics. <coughs> and at the end, we have uh, this case, an alcoholic male has developed hepatic cirrhosis. To control the ascites and edema, he is prescribed which one of the following. This is assignment and homework for our students and we have to know what we will select hydrochlorothiazide, estazolamide, spirinolactone, frusamide or chlorthalidone and thank you for your good listening.